Good morning, boys and girls. Thank you once again for joining us for today's Sunday School lesson. We're always happy that you take time just to sit in and listen to God's Word every Sunday morning. But before we start the lesson, let's just pause in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father in Heaven, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you that it is you who has enabled us to listen to your word. And our prayer, O oh Lord, is that you may speak to each one of us. We pray for all those who are attending by way of um, uh, the virtual platform, but O oh Lord, that you may also cause them to be attentive, that indeed you will speak to each one of us, that uh, at the end of the day, we will know that the Lord has spoken to us and that we will apply the very things that we have been taught of you. This we ask and pray through the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So boys and girls, last week, Auntie Mwenya took us through the lesson of sin wounding the cautious. So we are basically taught about the fact that each one of us has a conscience. And I think it was defined that the conscious, the conscious is that inner voice that is within us that will tell us whether we've done a good thing or a bad thing. And so today we'll continue with our Sunday School lesson and we'll look at the topic of sin that is suffering from a deadly disease. And we'll look at it through the story of Naaman in the Old Testament. So let's turn to the book of uh, Second Kings and we'll read from uh, chapter 5. That is uh, Second Kings chapter 5 and we we'll read from verse 1 up to 19. I'm sure you're there now. Okay, let's start. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Let's, let's pay attention to that part, boys and girls. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with a prophet who is in Samaria, for he, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. They said, So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the Fapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, 
would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. And he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Verse 17. So Norman said, Then, if, if not, please let your servant be given two mule lords of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant when my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there. And he, leaned, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. So boys and girls, like I said, we're going to learn about sin and that it is a deadly disease. And we're going to look at it through the character of Naaman, who also had a deadly disease, and it was called leprosy. So boys and girls were told something unique about Naaman. We were told that Naaman was a very powerful man in the army. In fact, he was the army chief. He was a friend of the king because he had won so many battles and he was respected by so many people. So we can easily say that he was very popular. And one interesting thing that comes out, boys and girls, is after, we, after having read from the passage, the Bible talks about one interesting thing, and that thing is that the Bible says he was a leper. Now, boys and girls, a leper is a person who suffers from leprosy. So leprosy is a disease that could not be cured at that particular time. What would happen to that person or, or a person who suffers from leprosy would be that they would lose the sense of touch. So the adventure, if they were to go to uh, any place where there's, there's fire and they would put their fingers on the fire, they would not feel the fire. And also boys and girls, leprosy also affected the body in such a way that some of the body parts would fall off. And also the face and other parts of the body as well would have so many sores on it. So boys and girls, leprosy was a very bad disease and a deadly disease as well. And as I said earlier, there was no cure for leprosy. And so here we are, boys and girls, we have this, you have this man who's a very powerful man, the chief of the army, a very accomplished man, but all, he had one big problem. He was a leper, he was suffering from leprosy, and no one could heal him of that leprosy. And the sad part about leprosy, boys and girls, like I said, is that um, because there was no cure, it meant that whoever suffered from leprosy would end up dying later on in their lives. And so if we look at Naaman, a powerful man, he also had a family as well, he had his position in the army. What that would have meant is that boys and girls he would have to leave all those positions because what would happen, uh, boys and girls, is this. If anyone was found to have that disease, and that disease was a very infectious disease, what would happen to them is that they would be sent outside the city to be all alone. Why? Because, because leprosy was a very infectious disease and there was no cure. So in order to protect everyone else in that town or in that city, the person suffering from leprosy would be sent away. So what that would mean for Naaman 
would be that he would lose his position as army chief and all the good things that come that came with that and also he would lose his family as well he would have to be taken away from his family so we can imagine boys and girls that uh, Naaman was a very worried man and was very anxious besides all these things that he had he was worried that at some point he would have to be chased from society to live as an outcast as a lonely person outside the town so one of the things that we can also do boys and girls is to compare the disease of leprosy and also the disease of sin remember the topic of our lesson this morning is sin being a deadly disease so let's look at the 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 similarities between leprosy and sin boys and girls leprosy what would happen to a person who has leprosy would be that it would spread to all the parts of the body so the, from the face up to the feet everything would be affected and it's also the same with sin boys and girls sin affects every part of us it affects the way we think and also it affects the desires as well have you ever wondered why most of the time you always want to have things to go your way you are selfish so boys and girls sin is also a disease that affects each part of us and one other thing about uh, leprosy boys and girls is that um, because the body starts to waste actually the body parts start to rot that is gross huh? that is very gross that is how bad leprosy was during that time in the same way boys and girls when you have sin as a as a disease even your character begins to rot in a certain way have you ever experienced a situation whereby you did something and you said to yourself hmm I didn't imagine myself doing such a thing probably you hit your brother or you hit your friend and you've always thought of yourself that you can never do that but because you became so angry you ended up beating your brother or even your friend and that's what sin does as well as a disease the more you live in sin the more it affects you and the more that the more rotten that your behavior becomes all those who had leprosy boys and girls were considered to be unclean like i said it is it was a disease whereby you had a person would have a lot of sores on their body and so such persons were persons were considered to be unclean and that is why they were sent outside the town and so boys and girls here we are told about Naaman's position that he was a very powerful man a very popular man a friend of the king and he was anxious about him being cured of the disease and it's interesting boys and girls that there was a little girl a helper to Naaman's wife who said to Naaman's wife look there's a prophet in Samaria as we read from the scriptures boys and girls who will be able to heal Naaman of his disease and when Naaman heard about that he quickly went to his king and told him about the good news now boys and girls imagine the army chief the army commander listening to a little girl boys and girls it just shows how seriously Naaman considered his situation he knew that if the disease of leprosy was allowed to continue in his body he would end up leaving his family leaving his position and being cast outside the city and so even when that news came from the little girl about the prophet in Samaria he took it he took that advice and went to the king and said I must go and see this prophet in Samaria so it can be the same with us boys and girls Naaman took the disease of leprosy very seriously, even to the extent of listening to a little girl. 
Do you take the matter of sin seriously in your life? Every day and every Sunday we listen to God's word. We are told that we are born in sin and that we need to repent of our sins. Do we take it seriously or just say to ourselves, ah, it's just one of them? Boys and girls, let's learn from Naaman. Naaman realized that leprosy was going to take his life. And so he took immediate measures, even to the extent of listening to a little girl. So I pray a little, I pray to you, boys and girls, that when you are convicted, when you hear the word of God, and it tells you that you are a sinner, and your conscience, as we were taught last week, tells you that you need to repent. You need to take it seriously and go to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. Let me ask a question at this particular point, boys and girls. The little girl, whom did she say Naaman should see when he goes to Samaria? Let's look at the Look at the Bible. Look at the passage in um, chapter 5. Can anyone tell me? Was it to see the king or was it to see the prophet? Can anyone tell me? Okay. I guess most of you are saying that he was the little girl had advised that Naaman should go and see the prophet in Samaria. But what did Naaman do? Naaman went and saw the king of Israel instead of going to see the prophet in Samaria. He took a lot of money, he took a lot of treasures so that he could present them to the king of Israel so that he could be healed. And when he got to Israel, uh, boys and girls, and presented the gifts to the king of Israel and said, I have brought these gifts now it is your time to heal me. The king of Israel, boys and girls, was shocked and surprised and was very worried that this person, who does he think I am? Remember from the passage, he was even saying, does he think that I'm, I'm God, that I can heal? Then he went on to say, maybe he's just trying to pick a quarrel. So because of that, boys and girls, the king of Israel became very worried and he tore his, his robe. But the good thing, boys and girls, is that Elisha, the prophet, heard about what happened. And he sent a message that, let Naaman come and see me. So, boys and girls, we see how Naaman, instead of paying attention to what he was advised to do, to go directly to see the prophet Elisha, he went and saw, he went and saw the king of Israel, which was wrong. And so, boys and girls, even us as human beings, we also think that we can do things the way we think best. Sometimes we think we can pay to get God's forgiveness. Remember, Naaman had gone with a lot of treasures and gifts to the king of Israel so that he could be healed. Even us we can behave in such a way that we want to pay for God to forgive us of our sins. And how do we do that? By saying to ourselves that I'll be a good boy. I'll be a good girl by doing good deeds. And we say to ourselves, God will definitely see these good works of mine and he will make me his or her child. In the same way that Naaman made the mistake by going to see the king instead of seeing the prophet Elijah. Most of us think that our good works will get us into heaven and make us to be children of God. But the Bible is very clear. It says that whatever we do, even the good works that we do, boys and girls, are filthy rags before him. So the only person, the only being, boys and girls, who can cure us from this deadly disease of sin is the great physician, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all you need to do, like we've always advised you, is to go to him and ask for forgiveness. Let's look at verses 10 and 12. 
And Elijah sent a message to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you shall be clean. So this powerful man, um, Naaman, the army commander, the respected man, is now heading towards the house of Elisha. But what happens, like we've read from the scriptures, boys and girls, who meets him? It's Elisha, prophet, prophet Elisha's servant. And he's told that he has to go and dip himself in the river Jordan for him to be healed. Boys and girls, Naaman was upset because, I mean, he was the army chief, he was a commander, so he expected the prophet to come forth before him and maybe call upon God and say, be clean. Sometimes when you watch TV, you see some prophets doing touch, touch, huh? maybe expected something like that. And so, but unfortunately, what happened was that a servant of the prophet came to him and said, you have to go to the river Jordan. And so Naaman was very upset because apart from the fact that uh, the prophet did not come to see him, the river Jordan boys and girls was not, was not the cleanest of rivers in Israel. It was actually a muddy river. And so he said, how can I be treated like this? I'm a powerful man. I'll just go back. There's no point. I just wasted my time in coming here. So boys and girls, sometimes when we hear the gospel, like Naaman, we are too proud to accept that we are sinners. Because of the good works that we do. Because we think, think of ourselves as very good people. And so when the Word of God says to us, you are a sinner because you are born in sin, we become annoyed and we actually reject God's word. Why? It's because we are proud. And in the same way, boys and girls, Naaman was too proud to go to the river Jordan. And also, boys and girls, we think that because we do good works, we do good deeds, that should make us fit for heaven. No, boys and girls, that does not qualify us to go to heaven. What the Bible tells us is that we should go before the Lord and humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness. And so, as we continue in the lesson, we see that Naaman is very upset and wants to go back, but one of his servants goes to him and tells him, look, commander, look, Naaman, you are a great man. You are the army commander, army chief. You've done so many great things. You've conquered so many nations. But yet, look what the prophet has asked you. It's a very simple thing that you go into the river Jordan and dip yourself seven times. It at this point, boys and girls, that Naaman realized that he was being proud and he humbled himself. So boys and girls, Naaman could have realized that, look, yes, I've conquered so many nations. I'm a great man. And this thing that I've been asked to do to dip myself in the river Jordan is a simple thing. I will humble myself and do it. And it's in the same way, boys and girls, when God speaks to us and tells us of our sins and the need for us to repent, we should not be proud. There's a cost to it, yes. But like Naaman, we should humble ourselves because that is the only way we can become children of God. If Naaman did not go to the river Jordan, you know what would have happened? His disease would have gotten worse. He would have lost his position. And also he would have been cast out of uh, the town and also Boys, boys and girls who would have ended up dying. And he thought about those things and says, no, it's better let me listen to what the prophet has said. 
and I pray for you boys and girls as well that you may also humble yourselves and ask for forgiveness because if you not do that sin which is a deadly disease will lead you to eternal death and what happened boys and girls there's a song which you usually sing probably you sing it at Sunday school today uh, regarding Naaman dipping himself seven times so what happened boys and girls in verse 14 we are told that Naaman was healed in fact his skin became like that of a baby no scars boys and girls he did a simple thing of dipping himself in the muddy water and he became healed and God says to you humble yourself ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and you become a Christian it's as simple as that you do not have to pay anything boys and girls and so I pray that that to become a reality in your life and lastly boys and girls one interesting thing that came out from Neman's life is that um, not only was he healed physically his sores were gone his leprosy had, had gone but we see one interesting thing boys and girls we see a change in his heart so not only was he changed outside we also see a change in his heart. And how do we see that? He, he now goes and he meets the prophet Elisha. And what does he tell the prophet Elisha? He, he tells Elisha that the God of Israel, the one who has healed me, is the only true God. Because where he was coming from in Syria, they used to worship other gods. And so he says, from now on, I will worship the one true God of Israel. I will stop worshiping the other gods of my homeland in Syria. And boys and girls, that was going to be dangerous for him. But because he had realized that God had given him a new life, God had saved him from death. He was now ready to save this one true God, even when he goes back home. And for some of you boys and girls, let me ask you a question. You say that you are a Christian. Have you been changed like Naaman? Are you a Christian just at church? What if we ask your friends at school? We ask your brothers and sisters, or even your friends in the neighborhood, can they say that there's something different about John? about Peter so boys and girls in the same way that Naaman because he had been healed by God gave himself to God our prayer for you is that you as well will give yourself to God not only on Sundays that you will give yourself to God even the way that you live out your life at school at home and everywhere that you go that indeed people may see something different about you and give glory to God so boys and girls thank you for joining us for the Sunday school lesson for this morning once again so thank you and have a good day bye bye